staging areas in Texas, including four disaster assistance response teams, a transportable multi-agency communications unit, and two dozen command and hey, control Rick. specialists to support the Joint Field Office in, in Austin. Rick. The Coast Guard Cutter Northland has been designated to serve as an offshore command and control platform for post-hurricane response, and there are a total of 21 Coast Guard Cutters currently evading the storm and pre-positioning themselves to follow in behind the storm and provide life-saving and other support as needed. On that last point, the use of Coast Guard assets for immediate post-storm relief was something we saw as recently as last week. When Hurricane Ike and Hannah devastated Haiti, the Coast Guard Cutter Laguerre and Coast Guard aircraft quickly responded and provided more than 35 tons of humanitarian supplies to the residents of Ganieves uh, who were cut off from the rest of the country by flooding. In addition, we have been authorized to activate 250 reservists for response operations if necessary. These additional people will supplement the capabilities of our locally based forces and our pre-deployed special teams. And finally, as the Secretary mentioned, we are conducting pre-storm flights to protect mariners at sea, advise them to seek safe waters, and also to ensure the safety of offshore oil and gas production facilities. Thank you very much, and we look forward to your questions. Admiral Vanderway. Thank you, sir. Well, good to be here with you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Craig Vanderweg, and I am the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response at Health and Human Services. Today, in anticipation of this storm, Secretary Levitt of our department has activated over 1,600 individuals to provide assistance to the state of Texas and Louisiana in the face of Ike. Those people are providing now support to the state as they evacuate their patients. The state is using all its assets, and in addition to that, we're providing over 300 additional ambulances, airlift, and both rotary wing and fixed wing to support that effort. Most of the hospitals have been considered for evacuation, and those that are in the low-lying zones have evacuated, and many are considering alternatives to sheltering in place even today. With the changing trajectory of the storm, it's very difficult for Texas and the health department there to move their patients uh, without unnecessary risk, but they've done an excellent job of husbanding their resources and targeting those people in greatest need and that would include elders those with disabilities and other special medical needs we have over 1,000 beds of additional care available established and staffed in texas to provide a place of shelter for those individuals who need it and need medical assistance we too stand ready to respond immediately after the storm and we'll work with the FEMA advanced teams as they go in to assess the damage and provide medical support where it is called for. Again, Texas has done a marvelous job. They have many assets. They're using them all to good effect, and our ability to support them is just a real honor. For those of you that are considering and should consider evacuation, I would remind you to remember to take your medications with you Take with you a list of your medical problems, if you can codify that, and be safe. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. Good afternoon, I'm Kevin Culliver, Assistant Secretary with the U.S. Department of Energy. In advance of the storm, the department is working with its industry partners uh, to get a good sense of what is happening in the region. Um, as you would expect, offshore production has been uh, uh, heavily affected. 95% of crude production is offline. About three-fourths of natural gas production is offline. Turning to refineries, there are 20 refineries in the Lake Charles to Corpus Christi area. Most of those are shut down now. I expect that by the end of the day, uh, almost all will be either shut down or reduced runs. We expect that this will likely have fuel impacts there is likely to be constrained supply while we wait for the refineries in the lower Louisiana area to come back online up to full production and to begin putting fuel back into the system. We'll know more of course uh, Saturday and Sunday once we start getting firm damage assessments. Finally the department continues to stand ready to release uh, refined excuse me crude stocks from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve uh, when called. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, my name is Armin Rosali and I'm with Red Cross, American Red Cross Disaster Services. Uh, first, let me say today that the Red Cross joins the nation in remembering those uh, that died in September 11, 2001 in Washington, in New York, and Pennsylvania. Today is on that day the Red Cross stands with the country. As you've heard from Director Paulson, we are now very focused on preparing for Ike's landfall. Red Cross has been working with its federal, state, local government partners for the past several days to get ready for this. Uh, as with previous storms, um, our focus is on uh, sheltering and, and receiving people as they're evacuated from the, the areas of risk. We also continue to work with uh, community organizations, the non-government agencies that are very active in disaster response, such as the NAACP, the National Baptist Convention, the Both People SOS, Catholic Charities, and Hope Worldwide. We joined FEMA and the state of Texas in urging citizens to listen to local authorities to heed evacuation orders. We've learned again from Gustav that it takes all of us, government, the Red Cross, uh, private sector partners and other agencies, and particularly informed citizens to ensure safe evacuations. Citizens are urged to stay informed, to have an evacuation plan, and to assemble uh, enough supplies to weather the storm. Uh, for this storm, uh, our disaster leadership team is in place in Texas. In addition to 1,500 local disaster paid and volunteer staff, we've sent in another 1,281 uh, Red Cross disaster workers, and we'll be working with uh, the state and local officials, again, as I mentioned, on, on sheltering. Um, we are prepared, in addition to sheltering, to provide meals uh, when the all-clear is, is given. As the storm moves through, uh, through the area, uh, we'll be ready with a variety of services, as I mentioned, health and mental health services, but also a very important service uh, to help people stay in touch with one another. People are going to evacuate. Uh, we are a very mobile uh, nation. Uh, we have friends and relatives who live throughout the United States. We're encouraging folks that before they, or as they evacuate, to access the Red Cross webpage, www.redcross.org, and on there they'll have a safe and well message that they could leave for their loved ones to let them know where they're going. Uh, all of this uh, is happening while we continue to respond to our Hurricane Gustav in Louisiana and other small disasters across the country. Last night we, shipped, we had 17 shelters in Louisiana with just over a uh, 1,000 residents. So uh, again, uh, we do urge folks to uh, pay attention to uh, uh, information released to the local authorities, and I'd be uh, happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you. Questions from news media here in the room first. I ask when called upon that you simply identify your name and your news organization. Mark Cosner from NBC. Secretary Chertoff, can you put the scale of what you're, the people in, in Texas and you're all facing in terms of how powerful the, the combination of the power of this storm mixed with an urban area, businesses, airports, oil refineries, such a large population. Can you put that scale of all this into perspective a little bit? Well, let me begin by saying that, uh, of course, we're describing the storm as it is uh, right now on Thursday. Uh, it is still possible that this storm may develop uh, in an unpredictable fashion tomorrow. It could uh, intensify beyond what we predict, or it could, in fact, break apart in some way because it is a very large storm. Nevertheless, taking what we know now, we're looking at a Category 3 storm, but one which is uh, exceptionally large. I believe it's larger in geographic scope in Winfield than Katrina was. Uh, because of that, because of the particular angle of attack, it's going to have a storm surge uh, that has been described to me as perhaps one that would normally go with a storm of even greater intensity than a Category 3. So we're dealing with a very powerful uh, push of water that in some areas could lead to a surge of 18 or 20 feet or even a little bit more. Uh, the other striking dimension of this storm is the uh, location of where the center of the storm is predicted to fall. Uh, one of the nightmare scenarios in the world of uh, hurricane watching is a hurricane hitting uh, up the Houston ship channel going through Galveston Bay. And we have one that's coming pretty close to what that nightmare is. It's going to be somewhat south of that. Uh, that means you can get a very powerful push of water into the 